What's up guys, welcome back to another Black Desert Online video. Today's video is going to be in relation to how to grind history, so it's a guide video and it's been requested quite a few times on the stream or I've just generally been asked about it, you know, uh, what goes into grinding history and things like that. Now, of course, history is the end game grinding spot in Black Desert Online. You need a lot of gear and when I say a lot of gear, I mean more like past soft cap. so even soft cap really isn't good enough to grind history efficiently. You need a lot of gear, but that's not just what you need. You also need to put a lot more work in scrap grinding history than any other grind spot. The reason for this is just because of how tanky the mobs are, everything you do is to milk as much out of the mobs as possible. Now, when you go and grind other grind spots, you know, even with lower end gear, you're generally one to two hitting the packs. It's only really when you've got really bad gear and you may be overreaching that you have trouble. So it's very important that you understand your class backwards and forwards, and you know how to actually abuse certain mechanics that your class may or may not have. So it's important to understand these factors because going into history, it's not just simple so it's why it's worth a guide more than is because other spots are just like oh this is the rotation uh, even other spots like Gyphon which are not mobs that are obviously one hittable they're very very tanky and in fact they're probably tankier than history mobs on their own but generally you've got five other people so you don't really notice the effect of your individual input so much as you would in history when you're on your own it makes a big big difference so history is that sort of unique grind spot it does make it more interesting in my opinion to grind it anyway if you've got the gear but obviously there's a lot that goes into it so it's more work but it is very very rewarding of course if you want to grind history there's lots of very good rewards including the ability to craft tongue grad earnings from black shards and red shards that both drop in history as well as straight tongue grad necklaces possible to drop uh, enchanted levels of that although i'm 99 percent sure they've lowered the rate of enchanted accessories I don't know if anyone else feels the same, but anyway, you could get a prior duo now, but it's obviously just the base one is 125 million, so a nice payout for most of us. Of course, the trash loot is worth 15,000 each. That's a lot of money, especially when you start getting upwards of 2,000 an hour. That's, you know, 30 million just in trash loot, so good profit there. It also has a very high drop rate of scrolls from an ancient language, which of course you could either use for your own durability, or you could just simply sell them. They are very expensive usually, roughly between 1.6 to 2 million, so that's very nice. And of course, they drop crystals. Now, crystals being at a high drop rate is good because it means one, you could either sell them, or two, you can heat them for maybe gin crystals, or you could use them for Dregan for like Manos processing stones. We don't quite have Dregan at the time of this guide. Hopefully, we'll get it soon, but it's always nice to have a nice supply to prepare. So I'm going to show you the common route I usually take looking for portals, which takes me past the Naga Temple. Sometimes there's one there which is probably the closest that you could find uh, coming from Sangrain. And this portal is, I would say, there quite frequently, but not always. In this particular case, it's actually not here. The red line here on the map, though, shows you where I usually go as, as regards to route looking. So it takes me past the Oasis and up uh, near near Ancado and then down past Valencia. Uh, and then I loop around. Now, the blue arrow shows you if I find Achman, which is often the case. Achman does seem slightly more common than Histria then I will go into Achman, exit Achman through the portal, which then takes you to Oasis. You should do that. Don't escape, escape, because one, you don't know if you're going to find Achman again, and two, it puts you nicely at the Oasis. If I do get to go to the Oasis, I'll usually just go cut right down instead, um, and then loop around the other way. So like almost like a reverse, except in this case, I go past Pilgrim's, Pilgrim's Haven first. So um, in this particular case, you actually are going to see me find Achman first, so you can see uh, what I mean about escaping through the uh, the gap. Now, uh, as for buffs for history, you should prep to have at least three foods, four if you can, but otherwise three is okay. It's kind of a pain to have four foods running at any time. Uh, so three is okay, and that'll uh, usually give you a nice nice put out, but it's better than having cron meal, um, especially because the camo meal isn't covered by the cron in terms of you don't get those kind of buffs. Um, Kama is really, really good uh, for history. So you want to make sure you have that. Uh, other th otherwise, um, the most important thing I would say is elixirs. Now you can run a, an elixir rotation if that's what you choose to do. I think it's just easier just to run a giant's draft elixir. Giants is the sort of cron version of elixirs where it obviously lumps a bunch of buffs into one, which is really super convenient in my opinion. So I usually run a giant's draft. It gives you lots of stamina. It also gives you um, bonus uh, crit damage, so uh, special attack damage, which is really, really nice, especially uh, for a lot of classes that have a lot of back attacks. So, yeah, uh, as you can see here, I'm just going to... I did a quick check to see if I didn't miss a portal. Um, 
and then I'm going to loop around like you saw on the map in the red line. Um, so yeah, these are the buffs I usually take. There's there's also villa buffs you can take, so you could either take like the PvP villa buffs, uh, which is just easy general to do, make sure you have money in Valencia. And actually, in general, grinding history, it's usually a good idea to have an alt in history uh, to move money around, um, to put money in the city, put pots in the city, whatever you might need. It's usually helpful to have one alt in uh, Valencia City itself. So yeah, as you can see here, I'm gonna find Histria. Usually, sometimes you can get Achman a lot in a row, so you just need to be aware of that. You just need to keep trying. Like I said, look at the map that I use. You can do your own if you want, but yeah. So from my spawn, I'm just gonna quickly show you uh, it's actually a very good spawn where I got in there uh, with all the NPCs. This is actually right next to the Elton rotation, which is also next to the main rotation, so it's very convenient. This is called the Elton rotation because there's a lot of Eltons. Elton is very uncommon in the main rotation. There's only two of them. Um, this isn't great because they have the highest drop rate of Tongrad necklaces. They also drop red shards, and they also drop the rarest of the compass pieces. If you're interested in making the compass, two pieces drop here from Vodkin and Elton. Uh, they're both very, very rare, but the Elton and one is ultra rare, especially if you're doing the main rotation. So that rotation is useful for that, especially if you want more Tungrad necklaces. The three mobs that drop Tungrad necklaces are Tenko, which there are none in the main rotation, Vodkin, which there are plenty, and Elton, which there are only two in the main rotation. So that's uh, something more to keep in mind if you're interested in, in that sort of thing as well, which is why you try to kill as many Vodkins and Eltons in the main rotation as possible. So coming up here is the main rotation, which is just a little bit north of the Elton rotation. So where you see me here is just a little gap where there's not enough mobs to really aggro if you sit right. So I summon my tent here. I look at the buffs. You can see I go between the villa and the uh, ancient grindstone just to show you. You could take either or. Generally, I take the PvP buff. Um, it does give AP as well, uh, but also I think the HP is nice and some... Survivability doesn't uh, hurt, I think, in this case. Now, the first thing you'll see me do is actually go through the spawn. And the reason I'm doing this is to check if anyone's there. I don't want to take anyone's packs. That's a little rude. Uh, history, usually enough channels are open that you could just simply swap rather than harass someone. So, um, always check just to see if someone's there. So... This first rotation I'm going to show you is uh, a fountain rotation, which means I use this little area here. I'm going to call the fountain. Um, and the reason I do this one is because this is the one I found gives the most pure cash. Um, but I also do another rotation, which is one, a little bit safer, and two, uh, is quite convenient because it allows you to uh, actually kill more Vodkins, which of course is more chance that Tongrad necklace straight drops. So generally I summon them back to this fountain. Now you can see this, this Bolton here, the tall one. This is an important mob because this is one of only two mobs that are actually ranged left in history. Vodkins have like a weird gimmicky range, but technically Eltons and Boltons are only true ranged mobs. So you always pull to the Boltons. Now, as I clear this first pack, I actually forgot that I didn't turn my skill, uh, my skill, uh, sorry, my, imp my keyboard input on. I'll get there in the end. Uh, I want to turn that on just so you guys can see if you're a ranger and what I'm doing. Uh, if you're not a ranger and you're watching this guide, I, I hope the guide is still useful to you, but obviously I'm going to talk more about ranger. Um, but a lot of it is with your class, uh, learning how to abuse back attacks. For example, as a Sork, you can abuse Blade of Darkness, which will allow you to get guaranteed back attacks. The mobs aggro on Blades of Darkness, and then you just go ham. Um, Ranger, you don't have that. Uh, our back attacks are very poor. Uh, we do have some, but they have to be incredibly close range, and only a few attacks can actually pull it off. So it's uh, not ideal, and we have no way to make the mobs aggro to guarantee any back attacks that we do have. So... For us, it's not as useful, but for other classes, it's incredibly useful, and, and, and DPS can change, uh, sorry, trash per hour, and DPS, I guess, can change hugely if you learn how to abuse back attacks, which is why I showed you the crystals earlier uh, in the video. So you can see here that basically um, I'm pulling this pack. This pack has two Vodkins after I'm done with the two Fountain mobs. Um, now what you'll see me use is a, a variety of different skills. Uh, you can see there that I've just used uh, Razor Wind as well as Sharp Feather to use Penetrating Wind. Now the reason I do that is because I try to put more bow skills into my rotation. Uh, the reason again being is that I have a Penzarka and not a Pen Dandelion, which means I have a lot more bow AP than I do have Awakened AP. So I try to put more bow skills in simply because of that fact, but you might not want to do that. It kind of depends on what you feel. You can try it if you want, um, but you might not feel it works as well for you as just spamming more awakened skills. Will of the Wind was really badly nerfed. It is really not great, um, but it is a good filler skill between uh, your cooldowns. Um, so I use it kind of towards the end of doing an awakened rotation. 
uh, and then after that I'll use uh, Razor Wind and Sharp Feather. Now you can see this rotation is coming back to the Eltons. I killed one just then. This is the second Elton in the rotation, and uh, obviously they're very important mobs, so I make sure I always kill these no matter what. Uh, I still need, unfortunately for myself, I still need the Elton compass piece. Um, I have the Vodkin one. Uh, my friend has the Elton one. Somehow he got it from this rotation. He's very, very lucky. But uh, he doesn't have the Vodkin one, which just goes to show you, despite the Vodkin one being more common, because the mobs are more common and the chance is more common, it's very, very rare to get the compass piece. But I think it's like an extra fun thing you can work towards. So... Um, the next thing I'm going to show you here is that I have a fairy, and um, it's very important actually to put the fairy on because sometimes you might like brainlessly forget to pot. So I always think it's um, kind of useful, to be honest, to have uh, the fairy on. Um, so just just another thing to keep in mind uh, is that fairy can be quite useful for auto potting if you forget yourself, or you just want to have a little bit more of a chill grind session. You know, um, having a fairy on is kind of cool. You know, so if you put something on. You don't have to worry about forgetting the pot. So uh, the other thing you'll also see is that I use all of my debuff skills that I can. Um, most of the packs, but not all, I'll summon, I'll group together with Blasting Gusts to give them an evasion nerf. Uh, then I'll also use Wailing Wind on the mobs. The reason I use Wailing Wind, jump of shame. The reason I use Wailing Wind is because Wailing Wind does a crit buff to myself and also gives negative 20 range DP against the mobs, which is actually more than Will of the Wind, which gives 12. So you can see me here um, pulling with Blasting Gust. So that's really important for Ranger. You want to use Wailing Wind. Now, if you're obviously you're in another class, so watching this, um, any, any ability you have that nerfs the DP of the mobs or the evasion of the mobs, you want to make sure you use it. Um, any, any, any skill you have that might buff you. These are things you wouldn't normally think about when you are... Um, grinding just crap mobs, you know, like, I don't know, you're at Crescent Shrine or something. You don't think about this kind of thing, but a history you should, because it'll make a big difference, that as well as obviously the back attacks like I talked about. The other thing is rangers, you want to try and use as much as possible, and sometimes even I forget, is Vinot. Vinot, of course, as you can see there, I paired it with Waltz of Wind. Um, Vinot gives you a very good attack speed buff, uh, which is, as a ranger, you want to buff anything that gives you attack speed, because obviously a lot of our DPS is tied to attack speed. Um, this is why uh, having attack speed buffs on your add-ons is actually really, really nice. In fact, I've actually found that the monster add-ons weren't that great for me. Could just be a placebo effect, but attack speed add-ons are certainly very good here. So you want to use those if you can. Um, alternatively, of course, you want to use your uh, awakening buff as much as possible for the attack speed buff. And also, you want to make sure that you pay attention to your black spirit rage. Um, the reason, obviously, you want to do this is because Black Spirit Rage, uh, when you absorb it now, gives you a very good AP buff and attack speed buff. So you want to make sure you 100% use this as soon as it's ready. So make sure that you lock your Black Spirit Rage. That's Alt plus B, if you didn't already know. Um, this will allow you to absorb it if you press Z, and that will basically give you a very, very big buff to your DPS. So make sure you use those two things, Awakening buff and your, um, your Z buff, essentially, uh, when they're off cooldown. So that's... Uh, something you want to keep in mind as well. So yeah, um, this this main rotation, um, as I've been talking, you can see that it's just basically you summon around the fountain. You don't go into that room there. You can see the little gap there. Um, but there is another rotation that I'm about to show you that you can do that exact thing. Um, but for this rotation, you don't do that. You just skip around and you come through here. Um, it's less Vodkins because you have the two fountain rotation mobs, uh, or sorry, packs. But it, it does actually yield more money because the mobs are easier to clear. Um, Vodkins are actually very tanky, by the way. They're tankier than Elton's, surprisingly. So, yeah. But yeah, this is this is basically uh, the main one of the main rotations you can do. Now, it's important to remember that in, in history, a lot of people... Um, there are a lot of different ways you can do it, essentially. Uh, there's different locations you can pull to where, you, you know, you can see me walking backwards here in this position, for example. Um, you always want to pull by the Elton. If you have a block, you can just stand and block by the Elton um, or the Bolton. But uh, I have to walk into a wall so I can abuse my walking backwards. Um, but yeah, as you can see that, you know, essentially you just want to pull in certain different ways um, just to make sure that you're by the range mob. Um, but there are different ways of doing it. For example, you, I'm going to go here, but if you're doing it differently, you can go on the other side. You can kind of see it in the left of the screen there. Well, if you could for a second, now it's in the north. But um, yeah, uh, you can you can do that as well. There's lots of different ways to do it. Everyone sort of has their own niche way. Um, 
of basically polling. So there is no perfect way to do it. I'm not saying the way I do it is perfect either. And then maybe even things as a ranger, you might come in and find something else that may be very useful to you. Um, I've, I've experimented with a lot of things since they nerfed Will of the Wind. Obviously, we're very, very far away from the DPS of that, and we're still very, very far away from the top classes of history, unfortunately, for Ranger. Um, there is quite a big imbalance in speed, um, but you would be surprised, I think, a lot of people watching this not thinking so much maybe think, oh, well, my class isn't very good for it. You'd be surprised, actually, what you can get away with with other classes. It's just more about knowing your class, but... I won't lie, there is certainly a big disparity in speed um, between the top classes uh, versus the others. Uh, Sork's obviously very, very far ahead of everyone else, but you'd be surprised. Things like Valkyrie, Maywa, Mystic is very good, um, and Dark Knight very good as well. So, you know, it, there are quite a few classes that do this quite well. Um, so you want to experiment with your own class and uh, find a rotation that helps. So yeah, um, that's this rotation, and we're going to go into the other type of rotation that you can do here just to give you a different example of how to pull this room this is the other sort of rotation you can do which contains the room instead of the fountain so basically same sort of pull here you're gonna get the uh the elton in this corner which is usually where i start with you can see those mobs are dead this because i've just cut the footage down but um you will come back to those mobs behind again because that spot does have two uh, vulcans you definitely want to make sure you kill that but yeah, as you can see here, I'm just going to uh, clear this one. Now, this one's a little bit uh, a little bit weird. I'm not entirely sure. It depends on the class and your gear, how fast you actually could clear this. Um, but you can throw these mobs in, for example, up here. Or you could skip them if you're a bit slower. Um, and if you need to, to be honest with you, you will have to go to the fountain. Um, a lot of classes, especially geared sorks, will be far too quick for this. So you would have to kill the fountain and the room. Um, so you can figure out a rotation from there, really. But um, for now, we'll just do this, which is uh, basically skipping the fountain. Killing these packs. Um, this is basically, this pack here is, you kill it. Well, essentially, it's killing it for the trash loot more than anything else. Um, of course, they don't have super rare loot. Although, Calquesh can drop black shards, but I generally find that black shards, at least in this rotation, are far more common than red. And that's because only Eltons and Vodkins can drop red, but there's so many Calquesh in here that can drop you black shards that you get a lot of black ones anyway. So, yeah, as you can see here... Um, an interesting thing I'll note there is I used Heavenly Knot, and Heavenly Knot with Absolute Bow Skill actually um, does quite a lot of damage, so sometimes I'll go into Bow Form uh, with Heavenly Knot instead, um, but other times you'll see I won't do it, it just really depends. See there, I'm uh, obviously pulling once again with uh, Blasting Gust just to give them an evasion debuff. You can also use Cold Blade as a ranger. Uh, Cold Blade gives you a nice buff. You can also use the other forms, which is where you slash forwards um, to give yourself some AP. Um, Basically, it's a balance of whether you think you have time to do it before you go ham and whether it'll actually buy you enough extra speed that not attacking immediately is worth it. Uh, rip that guy reset, so you have to be a little bit careful there. Um, this rotation here, I go straight through here and come to here. Basically, I come in at an angle, and that's to get the little Vodkin that's by the Bolton there. You see the top right of the screen. There's another one on the top left. I try to avoid aggroing the Boltons usually on this one. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Um... But I try to avoid them if possible because, honestly, having them there is kind of annoying. They're ranged. They have a Stiffen CC. Um, as far as I'm aware, Stiffen is the only CC in Histria. Um, at least that's certainly the most common. But um, they are annoying. Uh, if you get CC chained like that, it's not fun. These mobs do a lot of damage. So, yeah. Um, however, as you can see there, I've accidentally pulled it. However, if I don't pull it, I'll always kill by the Vodkins. So Vodkins are a giant pain themselves. Uh, despite being supposedly melee, they have like sort of a mini range attack, and so sometimes they won't immediately gather to you, so it's just better just to kill them uh, on their spot rather than have them pull to another spot. So yeah, that's how I usually kill the room. There's two Vodkins in there, and I pull to the two Vodkins, the South Vodkin and the North Vodkin. Um, I'm saying South and North as if that's an actual direction, but um, the Entry Vodkin and the uh, Exit Vodkin, let's say that. Um, those are the two I pull to. So yeah, this one you'll recognize, of course, I'm just coming around the corner and I'm pulling this very much the same except the reverse way around. Um, just make sure you pull the both Vodkins is all you really need to worry about and then you can just push them into the corner. If you waltz of wind out of a back there, you'll see that they'll sort of be vacuumed almost into the wall, so that helps. Um, Wailing Wind also has a push on it, so that helps as well. Um, as other classes, of course, you just want to make sure you... Um, 
try to push them into the corner. And if you have something that you can get them to aggro on to get back attacks, that'll be uh, something you'll also want to use. Uh, and that's just generally the case of all these locations. So yeah, this is this is basically it. This is the other rotation. It's not uberly complicated. It is just something you just need to practice on. Pulls are something that won't come immediately to you. It'll be something that you practice on. Um, and you'll probably improve on what you've been seeing here um, or get your own flair or something. And that goes for skill rotations as well, of course. Obviously, if you're another class, that won't apply. But um, the pulling will. So there's lots of different ways that you might want to go about pulling each of these types of packs. So yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. There's nothing I can really think of. Um, maids help as well. If you have maids, that'll help immensely. Uh, for your pulls, uh, just because you might get overweight. There are NPCs at the front of the uh, where I actually spawned in that you can use, but generally it's better to just use maids and an alt in Valencia. Um, a tent is obviously very useful for repairs, but again, there is an NPC for that as well. Aside from that though, I think the only other thing to mention is that this is the best place in the game to use a loot scroll. So if you're very comfortable with the grind already, this is the best place to use those. Uh, you can also use a camera blessing if you so choose. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed the guide. I hope it was helpful to you. If you have any questions that you think I can answer, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. Otherwise, thanks again for watching the video.